and treat well those who are by your side and support you, valuing even if it's in secret. This is a touching story of a mother and son that will make you reflect on your life with your parents. Mrs. Olga was a 70-year-old widow with good financial stability as she lived off her deceased husband's pension. Mrs. Olga had only one child born from her womb at the age of 16, and this baby died a few days after birth. Her husband was in tears, but Mrs. Olga, even at a young age, was a strong-willed woman who immediately moved forward with whatever came her way, even with the death of her first child, as she had been raised this way by her parents. So, shortly afterwards, a friend proposed to her to adopt a girl so that she could be her mother. Dona Olga and her husband liked the idea and accepted the challenge. The young girl came already at eight years old and was well raised and treated, but displays of affection from her adoptive mother were rare. Over the course of two years, people saw that Dona Olga and her husband took good care of the young girl, so the proposal arose for them to take care of a five-year-old boy. The couple accepted it willingly and began taking care of the children. Over the years, the two grew up, and before leaving home and starting their own families, Dona Olga and her husband continued to adopt children. Some were their nieces and nephews, some had been abandoned, and she didn't put the gender, race, or sexuality of the people she raised above anything else, everyone was well taken care of. This was very significant, since Dona Olga and her husband were people who were born in the beginning of the last century, in the early 1900s. So, you can imagine how their upbringing was, strict, serious, without much affection, and without many mistakes. They followed their religiosity very seriously and strictly, but the only problem was the lack of emotional affection from mother to children. Dona Olga was playful religious, but did not show much emotions. When her children had to leave, she accepted it and moved on until one day, everything changed. Her husband had betrayed her and had a child outside of their marriage. They separated but remained married. Her husband moved in with his lover and their son who wasn't his, but he didn't know. And once again, Dona Olga didn't let it bother her and moved forward because she knew she was doing her part for the world. But she felt that something was missing, even though she didn't admit it. She felt it. Her children were grateful and loved her and showed it, but she was strict and serious about it. At a certain point in her life, already a widow, a friend asked her why she didn't raise another child. Dona Olga laughed and said she was too old for that. But because she liked her friend very much and she always said that Dona Olga had taken exemplary care of all her children, she ended up accepting. It would be the first newborn she would raise. The children, even though they were older and married, didn't agree. However, she accepted since she lived alone in a large house with her dogs and her orchard on a small farm. The agreement was very simple the child would be born and, within two days, would be in the hands of Dona Olga. And that's what happened. This child was her friend's grandson, who insisted that Dona Olga take care of him. The mother no longer had the conditions to have children, since she already had many. And so it was done, the child was born and, on the day of his birth, Dona Olga's heart beat three times stronger than usual. She had never felt that before and was even scared. Within two days, the child was in her possession without even having had breast milk. Dona Olga took care of him in a different way, because he reminded her a lot of her first child who had died when she was a newly married teenager many years ago. The child grew up. Dona Olga didn't show affection and never said I love you to her children and not even to him, maybe because she was afraid of the pain of losing a child like her first one. Dona Olga didn't go to school meetings, or mothers, fathers, or children's day parties. The boy Eduardo got used to it. Eduardo, even though he was a very energetic and mischievous child, 
was very intelligent and got good grades. He excelled at everything he did. And on the day he learned to read, he was happy to tell his mother. She gave him a happy smile and praised him, but nothing more. Eduardo never forgot this day. Dona Olga's children noticed that she took care of him in a different way, as if she wanted to show the motherly emotions that she never had for the others. There was some jealousy from Liz because of this treatment, even though she avoided showing it in front of Eduardo, but her children noticed how Eduardo didn't get attention from their mother. Like many children, he misbehaved to get his mother's attention, but it was useless to do so with a woman as experienced as a mother. He was the only one who had the courage to kiss her on the cheek and hug her. She didn't like it and scolded him, to his sadness. Over the years, at the beginning of Eduardo's adolescence, he began to notice that his mother's mental health was different. Dona Olga began to forget things, started to have hallucinations, and sometimes wouldn't speak. Eduardo tried to alert his family, his siblings, about what was happening, but in front of everyone, Dona Olga was perfectly healthy. Her attitudes and personality only changed when she was alone with her son at home. It was very difficult for Eduardo to accept that his mother was not mentally well and no one saw it, only he who lived with her. Some of Dona Olga's children had already died, and only a few were alive. It was left to Eduardo, at the beginning of his adolescence, to take care of her and be by her side. The family didn't give him credit because he had been a child who wanted his mother's attention and caused trouble. It was at this moment that he accepted deep down that he should be by her side. He couldn't study because his mother would wake up at night talking to herself. His siblings, when they went to his house, didn't see anything strange with Dona Olga, only Eduardo knew everything. His studies were affected and the dream of studying medicine was gone. In addition, his mother needed him, and he would never abandon her. Dating, he couldn't. He still had help from the maid, who, even though she was paid, did more than she could and should. This was because she liked his mother. Also, when he was an adult and everyone had already noticed that Dona Olga was not well, Eduardo continued to take care of his mother. He managed to finish his studies, but he couldn't graduate. His mother's money was always all for her, her health, and household bills. One day, Eduardo came home and his mother was already very old, but even so, she got up and hugged him, surprising Eduardo. He kissed her on the chest and said, I love you, my son. He was the only child she had and ever said that she loved. After a hug, for Eduardo, this was a reward for a lifetime. Some time later, Mrs. Olga passed away at 99 years old. Life continued for Eduardo, going to work on the second day after burying his mother. For, just like her, he learned to move forward even in the worst moments of life. It was the greatest lesson his mother taught him, to move forward even with pain. This is a story that few people know. Stories like this happen every day, but no one will ever know. And the moral of the story is its title, Treat well those who are by your side and support you, valuing them even if it's in secret, and move forward even if it's difficult. I hope you enjoyed this true story. I didn't give the real names of the people involved out of respect. Don't forget to activate the notifications and subscribe to the channel, leave your like and comment what you thought of this beautiful story. I'll see you in the next video, bye for now.